All right, let's start with uh, let's just start with the uh, Lua. Let's start with Lua can starting to contribute to NeoVim. I think that's sort of like the basis of a lot of the different things that we're, you know, we're working towards here. So yeah, give give us a little bit of info about how you started doing uh, Lua stuff, okay? Yeah, for sure. So now, now you can hear me, right? So that was yeah. really odd before. Yeah, yeah, perfect. it was perfect. my fault. It was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Uh, perfect. No, so basically like what I was saying before, um, I think I've been using uh, new Vim, at least like Vim for probably over 20 years now. Um, but, but to be honest, like um, I think at the initially, at the real start, I used it also for pre pretty much all my coding, all my development. Uh, but then at a certain point, I moved on to things like Sublime Text, which is Studio Code, etc. You what? Actually, one of my darkest secrets, <laughs> I've only quite came back to a new Vim <laughs> earlier this year. Um, which was for me a great time because one of the first things I saw, uh, I think I read a, a, a Reddit post that was one of those posts about like how do I um, uh, convert my init.vim to init.lua. Uh, mm. And that got me really uh, excited straight away uh, because it's, it was pretty cool for me to learn that there's a, a new way to um, doing things uh, with Vim. Yeah. Um, like before, I think I've actually dabbled trying to make a couple of plugins in VimScript, but that was really not that easy. So, <laughs> um, I was really happy to see that there was a Lua support now. Um, so I think one of the first things I did was uh, make a, a color sch a scheme, Tokyo Nights, um, mm -hmm. which became uh, pretty popular uh, pretty quickly. Um, then after that, I made a couple of other plugins. Uh, I think I have about a total of 10 now in total. Um, and what I really like about Lua is that it's a, it's a pretty simple language mm -hmm. um, because it probably has to be really fast as well because it's meant to be embedded in a bigger systems, etc. Um, but at the same time, it's also a language. It's a, it's a full-blown programming language. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool to, uh, uh, to make plugins and, and other things with that. Um, so yeah, like what I've also seen is that uh, um, since in the last couple of months, the amount of plugins that have been released is, is quite tremendous. If you uh, um, yeah. just look at that, then I think it's, a, it's been a great decision to, uh, to move to the Lua support in, in there as well. Um, yeah, I think for me, making plugins, it's just really easy with Lua. And before, um, it looked super hard. <laughs> and actually, as I said before, I tried, and it was just also super hard for me. Mm -hmm. Probably also my own fault, because I never really um, um, dived into the, the VimScript language uh, too much or too deep. Mm -hmm. um, but with Lua, uh, as I said before, it's, it's so much easier um, also to like fix bugs of other plugins. Um, but also to, to contribute to the, the new Vim core, uh, yeah. the, the runtime at least. Um, it makes it a lot easier. I think that's a really a great, great way uh, forward. Um, yeah, can yeah, you talk a little bit? You know? Yeah, talk yeah. about little a little bit of like just transitioning from, you know, writing a few, pl like writing some plugins and you're sort yeah. of working on those sort of by yourself. And then how did you sort of transition that into like contributing to NeoVim core? Like, you know, how did that process yeah. feel? And uh, secretly encourage chat to, you know, consider that it's not so hard to, uh, <laughs> to be a contributor. Exactly. <laughs> no, for sure. I think for me, like, um, I think I actually read it somewhere, I think, or maybe Michael said it at some point in the chat that, um, like, at some point I asked, like, where can I make a contribution to any of them? And I think it's Michael uh, that said, like, uh, just spend some time or make, make some changes uh, on the mm -hmm. things that are, that, that matter to you, that, that you think are important. Mm -hmm. So, is my internet still here? Yeah, yeah you're good. Um, so for me, that's always been a bit, um, I'm a bit of a freak when it comes to like, mm -hmm. um, how things look like in the editor. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was definitely one of the first areas where I wanted to uh, contribute. And, uh, luckily for me that we had the, the, all the, uh, new work, uh, on the LSP, uh, the language server protocol, which also has quite some UI elements, uh, within new of them. Uh, so for me, that was the ideal place to, uh, to start contributing and, um, and making some changes that I, I wanted for myself as well. So. Uh, that's been pretty cool. Um, so I, I definitely think that um, the, the whole runtime, I mean, the, the Lua runtime specifically, yeah. is definitely an area where um, I definitely love people could, could make some contributions. Mm -hmm. I'm personally not that um, experienced with C programming. Um, I actually didn't, did that like 15 years ago, but it's <laughs> been a long time. Uh, so I could maybe look into those things as well, but I definitely, if people want to start contributing, then they should definitely look into the the the, the low-hanging fruit that's available in some of the uh, uh, Lua runtime 
yeah. uh, things, I guess. Yeah, cool. I, what, one note, too, for sort of, you know, future things that we'd like to work on just, like, generally, I think, too, is, you know, I think we want to sort of enable people to super easily do things like, oh, I want to add a new API function. It would be really cool at some point, you know, Be Friedel and I have been chatting about, you know, for some day in the future. Chat, there's going to be more development after 0 0.5, okay, so just relax, you know. But uh, enable it so you could literally just write only Lua to add a new API function or something like that to NeoVim so that we can just lower that barrier to entry, do easy things, you know, all that kind of stuff. Just uh, make it really easy and fun for people to do. Because I think, like you're saying, a lot of people feel like a little intimidated if it's like, oh, I got to learn Vim script or like some special way of doing Vim script, or yeah. I got to learn how to do C and like, I don't want to accidentally break the editor <laughs> or something like that, you know? So I think that's, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that was, I was, I was just hoping to hear how that transition went and what you thought about Lua. I don't know if you have any, maybe like, you know, a few tips or a few things that you thought were really helpful in learning Lua or, you know, just getting started. How did you, how did you do that? And how did you sort of like turn that around That's into right. being productive? So for me, basically like, um, I didn't have a lot of experience with Lua yet. Mm -hmm. Um, but I did use a hammer spoon. I'm not sure if you know that one. Mm, it's mm -hmm. uh, some kind of SDK to basically build your own uh, VM on a um, uh, Mac. Yep. Uh, which is also in Lua. Uh, so I had some experience with uh, that. Was basically my first experience with Lua. Um, but yeah, for sure, there's a, there's a couple of great guys uh, guides online. Uh, I think it's from that many seconds to minutes. Uh, I'm not sure what the, what the guide is called. Yeah. Um, but it really goes from the very simple things in Lua uh, to the more advanced stuff. Right. And again, Lua is such a basic language that there simply isn't that many. It doesn't really have a lot of language features. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's fairly easy to, to get started on Lua. Um, and also, like, people that want to get started, uh, I would really suggest them to start building very small things first, like basically within their own config probably even. Yeah. They do have like a function that does something neat uh, that they want to use. Yeah. Um, and of course, the more that you use it, the easier it becomes to, uh, to do that, to, to, to do more of that. That's actually why I started with, uh, with the color scheme, Tokyo Night. Yeah. Because to be honest, that there's it's in Lua, but to be honest, there's not really a lot of Lua code in there. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, but so that was for me the, the first thing I did in, in as a plugin. Um, and then afterwards, for me, it became easier and easier to do other stuff. Yeah, totally. Um, also, to get to know the, the Vim API, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but where there were definitely also a couple of uh, a lot of new things there for me. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's been, uh, been a lot of fun. I've, I've been having a lot of fun lately. So uh, um, you never Very get cool. bored with uh, the Vim stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got to I gotta say thanks, Bisco. Bisco doing 40 gifted subs. Thanks, Bisco. I appreciate it big time. Um, We'll get, uh, maybe we can take a few questions from the chat if anybody has any questions, you know, and we'll try and do a little bit of questions at the end of every, uh, you know, the every round of sort of little talk. So if people have any questions, send them in the chat right now and we'll try and we'll try and answer those. Um, oh, people are wondering if you use Arch. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> so my main driver is still Mac. Uh, mm -hmm. For the simple reason that I think last year I bought a new MacBook Pro, mm -hmm. and actually I had the ID to install Linux on it, um, but with the uh, the T2 chip, uh, it's not that straightforward. I do have a Fedora uh, running in a dual boot, but um, yeah, there's still issues with it. Uh, like, yeah, it's it's a, it's a shame, really. Like, I really like the, the 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 hardware, the laptops. Yeah, yeah. But the Linux support is not that great. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Wow, Nix, thanks. Thanks, that's a uh, very generous. <laughs> Visco taking back his top spot. <laughs> oh, dang, chat's having a gifting war right now. Oh, man. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate it. Um, someone asked, what's your favorite Envim Lua method? <laughs> your favorite method? Yeah. Wow. Pairs, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, we. I'm not even sure that's even called a method, but uh, it looks like a method. Yeah. So pairs for sure. Yeah. I love it. It's a good Prince, one. Also a great one. <laughs> <laughs> Someone was wondering how and if you use tree sitter. Oh yeah, yeah. I love tree sitter. Definitely. Do you um, use it for anything besides yeah. the highlighting, or what do you use it for? 
Well, I, I created a couple of plugins that use it recently yeah. as well. Uh, let me check my list actually. Um, <laughs> I think To Do Comments is a, mm. one of my plugins that uses Twitter, yeah. uh, where you basically can only uh, highlights To Do tags, but only in comments. Um, I have other stuff that uses Twitter, but oh yeah, I have a new unreleased plugin, um, Twilight. But oh. it's unreleased, so I can't really tell a lot about it yet. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm also based on Twitter. Oh, nice. Um, so yeah, I definitely use Twitter. It's a, it's a, it's a been a really cool addition to a um, new one as well. Yeah. I think only for zero dot six, but it's mm-hmm. it's already available. Uh, experimental. Yep. Um, yeah, and we'll talk no, quite a bit like about the, that later yeah. today. Well, oh, yeah, I have yeah, a thing with uh, sure. with Vigo. Uh, yeah. Someone asked Lua and FT plugin when I think we've got that. So that's that's the answer to that one. JS Attack wonders how do you style your gorgeous hair, which I think is a pretty fair question. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah some wax pretty simple just keep it simple and it's not really styling it's the opposite of styling and that's what you get when you do that <laughs> yeah, oh man <laughs> awesome awesome uh, uh let me see uh so someone's wondering about lua auto commands versus and key maps those are in progress in neovim core uh, and yeah. we're working on making those correctly integrated uh you know without doing wrappers so that's uh on our on our roadmap and things we're working on someone wonders difference between vim.api and vim.fn do you know the answer Folke, off the top of your head vim.fm is uh, all the vim functions yeah and yeah the api is the api basically so the yeah, yeah that, that so vim.fn sense, but at the same time it's not really yeah. a good explanation <laughs> vim.fn uses uh vim.call basically under the hood and it sort of reroutes yep. back into vim script land does things and then back into lua vim.api just goes straight over so yeah uh someone wondered official release today what time already released check github check it out <laughs> right now chat you guys missed it <laughs> um let's see i think uh what's your what plugin manager do you use oh i use Piker. um yeah. since the beginning yeah um, i think i Tried maybe pack. What's it called? P A Q. But I instantly moved to, to Packer uh, because what yeah. I really like about it is the the lazy loading mm-hmm. uh, support, uh, which is pretty neat. Um, also that it allows to install um, uh, what is it? Lua rocks. Yeah, Lua rocks. Which is also pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's the. Um, yeah, me uh, and WB really worked like, uh, on Piker. on that for a while. I'm excited to explore how that you know evolves over the next. Yeah next couple of years i think it'll be exciting to have real packages to install for plugins that's pretty cool and i know uh yeah. michael and i have been chatting as well about thoughts about how to sort of standardize some of the lua plugin ecosystem and we'll you know we'll talk about more of that i think probably not today because that's further on the roadmap but that's just a yeah. just a little bit a little bit uh info 